he noticed something critical, which was he couldn't hear the dog's footsteps. <laughs> Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode of a Spooky Stories. My name is Jackie, otherwise known as Gorla Corajula, and I am here today with my friend Dee. Hi, I'm really excited to be here. As you know, a Spooky Stories is a series where I invite different friends on so we can tell each other a spooky stories that have happened to us personally or to our family members. And while we talk, we like to be doing something. So this week, I got some kinetic sand and we're gonna be messing with it while we're telling each other stories. Uh, Dee, do you wanna start off today? I would love to start off today. Okay. Um, I'm gonna start with uh, more like a, a classic story. Um, I'm from Durango, Mexico, and this is a story that most people in the city know about. For context, Durango is like a very, it's relatively conservative. There are lots of churches in a lot of places. Um, so the story is that there was this family, had only one daughter, um, and the idea was that kind of the only way that the families was going to like rise in social status mm -hmm. was if they sent their daughter to a monastery. And so the thing is though, this girl's name, her name was Beatriz. And what people Ooh. didn't know okay. was that um, she was in love with this man named Fernando. Oh, Fernando. Fernando. <laughs> Such a novella already. It really is because <laughs> here's what happened okay, okay. is that Okay, they're in love, and she's about to be sent to be a nun, and he's about to be sent to go to war because he was a French soldier. Oh! Uh-huh. Okay. And so then, while she's at the cathedral, and this is a cathedral that is in, like, the middle of Durango, the city. People are walking down. It's, like, on Main Street. Okay. Um, and the story is that this, that this nun would go up to the... So she was already a nun? She, well, she became a nun. Okay, okay. So, you know, you had to go through the process. The entire time, she's missing her man, Fernando, who is away at war. Okay. Um, and now she's in the cathedral, and she's a nun there. And she, every single day, she would go up to the very top tower, and she would look out waiting for Fernando. The war ended, and still no Fernando. Um, and eventually, she died. And so the thing is, <laughs> waiting for Fernando, her waiting life? for Fernando her entire life because he never came back. Oh, he died. He died. He died. That's, that's, what, that's the assumption, you know. Okay. Maybe he didn't want to come back. Okay. I don't know. Maybe he found a new shorty. He might have. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is that Beatriz didn't know that. And so oh, now what you, happens is people that walk down the street, there's like a plaque and everything. If you look at the in the window of the cathedral. At night, you will see the silhouette of Beatriz waiting for Fernando. And that's something that I've seen it. Most people have seen it. What? <laughs> yeah. Like, the story is on a plaque in front of the cathedral. Do that. No, 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 no. Do I'm it. not even playing. Do they have a mannequin there? I don't know. <laughs> they, I don't. I when mean, you look, when you look, it doesn't look like a mannequin. Um, <laughs> what if they just have a person standing they, there? The oh, entire yeah. night. It's like a job you can apply for. <laughs> Maybe they, every nun has to have, like, that's a part of this process. <laughs> they have to take the part of Beatriz. So, with her, like, nun attire? Mm-hmm. You can see a nun, like, that you can at see her silhouette. Time? No, only at night. Because it can only see, you can only see her shadow, like, her silhouette, her shadow. And, like, that's a story that just about everyone in Durango kind of, like, is aware of. It's like a common thing that everybody sees. Is it like every night? It's or possible. like when did you see it? I guess I guess some people can't see it. Um, but when I went and I looked, I could see it pretty clearly. When my brother looked, he could see it pretty clearly. Uh -huh. Um I don't know, like there's some folks that have said that they're like, ah, nah, there's nothing there. That type of thing. How um, old were you? Uh, the last time I looked, I was probably in my 20s, early 20s. Okay, so it's not like only children. No. Okay. It could be a big conspiracy by the church itself. Yeah, like, <laughs> if it's at night, it's only at night. Maybe they have like a graveyard shift for the nuns. <laughs> Who's going to be Beatrice tonight? Maybe my, that's like their punishment. My theory <laughs> is that they 
that they have some sort of like a thing up there that they light the light on to be able to see the shadow um oh. but i said that to my cousins and we walked around the cathedral uh -huh. trying to figure out well and my brother and we get a little into the whole like how could this really be true mm -hmm. um and so we were looking to see at the different ways that the light could be hitting it but what didn't make sense to us was as it gets darker like there are different lights that turn on um okay. just from everywhere so mm -hmm. we couldn't really figure it out i'm gonna have to go to the rambo and see that <laughs> <laughs> what if you can't see, see it? it? What if I'm not a believer? What if you? Oh, oh, yeah. Because it, I mean, it's a story. Like everybody, no, like everybody knows this, and a lot of people have seen Beatriz. Yeah. Oh, but how sad if it's actually true. <sighs> that is you pretty know? sad that she's still, she's waiting, still waiting for, for Fernando. Fernando. And we don't know time. what happened to Fernando. I mean, we can assume that he died in the war, but there's sure. no other. That's being relatively kind. Mm. Let's hope Beatriz finds some peace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, she could sit down. Yeah. I don't know. Mm -hmm. She's been standing there this whole time. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that was good. That was a good yeah. one. Oh, yeah. cool. So I'm going to tell you a story mm -hmm. that my grandpa told us, like, forever ago during a family gathering. Oh, my God. And I, my best. palms got so sweaty. <laughs> When he told me the story, and we just happened to be at his house. Of course. Of course. Does the story take place at his house? Yes! <laughs> yes, it does. And I was just like there, looking at his dogs, <laughs> looking at him, not wanting to go near any of them. Okay, so it's actually a pretty pretty quick story, uh -huh. but I'll just tell you like what happened afterwards. Okay, so this was when... My grandpa was way younger, and, like, my mom and my tias were kids. Uh -huh. So, my grandpa owns his house in the town. Uh -huh. <laughs> the town of, like, at that point, 30 houses. Small and town, then he owned two ranchos that were, like, oh. by walking, it takes about two and a half hours to get there. Uh -huh. By horse, it's, like, an hour and 30 minutes. Mm. And so, they split their time between the city. <laughs> I see, I see. So while, I see. while school was in session, they were in the town. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, you know, when it wasn't, they were in the rancho taking care of their crops and everything. Because, you know, the town was small enough that they didn't have stores. So if people wanted to eat, they needed to produce oh. what they were going to yeah. eat. Yeah, makes sense. So um, my grandpa had spent all day in the rancho, you know, working on his crops. Mm -hmm. I think it was at that time it was corn and potatoes that's what they were growing it was that season um and part of his duty was to also bring the cows back so they kind of just oh. let the cows out so they can roam so they yeah. can like eat um and then at night it was their job to like corral them and put them back in their cow pen i don't know right what it's called. right yeah. so that night he was so busy he he had in his head that he needed to take the cord back home and so uh -huh. he space he forgot about the damn cows so he goes back home and he's there they're doing the corn and then my grandma reminds him and she's like hey like did you remember to put the cows away and he's like damn it i did not and so she's like oh, it's dark and at that point it was dangerous you know of like course, it's dark it's dark not only are there animals like you don't know what kind of people might be out there you know like yeah he had a nice horse they might have tried to steal his horse they could have killed it right my grandma didn't want him to go right obviously that's pretty logical but he was like but the cows are gonna get lost and oh, man what a heart he had yeah he was no it wasn't it was his cow it was a money <laughs> 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 So he's like, oh, the poor cow. No, no, no. Scared. It was about the money. <laughs> that makes sense. So makes my sense. grandma was like, okay, like take the dogs with you. So my grandpa okay. has always had a million dogs, uh -huh. at least five at all points. Okay. And he had one, two dogs that he really loved, but one that was like, that was like his soulmate. That dog loved him. That dog went everywhere <sighs> oh. with him, and because he loved him so much, he was like, I know that I'm putting myself in danger by going. I don't want you to come with me. Oh, no. So when he was about to leave, the dogs, you know, got ready and they were going to go with him. And the dogs, he was just like, no, you can't come, you know. 
and the dog would not like the rest of the dogs are like they're chilling because we're gonna save ourselves a three-hour trip yeah. but that dog is like that's that's my human i, I gotta go with i him. gotta go with him gotta protect and so my grandpa would like ride out and then the dog would follow and he would have to come back and be like no stay here and then again he would ride out and the dog would figure out a way to get out of the house and go to him and so he got so upset with the dog and he's like the only way that i'm gonna get this dog to stay is if i scare it so he started yelling at it he started yelling at the dog he started cursing at the dog and he was like go back home and don't come back and like the dog obviously got scared got sad yeah, he was like i made my human sad yeah. so Bad. he he watches the dog like my grandma's there and she he watches her put the dog in the house yeah and then he's riding out and he's probably like halfway through his horse ride <laughs> it was like through his journey through his horse ride to the rancho when he looks back and he sees the dog oh critical thing the dog is white <laughs> oh, okay dog, it's he, easy to see him because it's, it's, nighttime. Him. it's nighttime that makes sense so he sees the damn dog and he's just like well you're here whatever and so he's riding you know trucking along mm -hmm. you know the horse sound when you're like doo -doo -doo -doo. he's trucking along and he's talking to this dog and the dog was behind him the dog wasn't near him and so he thought that that was a little weird like because, far uh-huh like behind it because the dog would always ride in front of him right because he was protecting him so he started Gally. getting a little concerned because he's like if this dog is back here something must be scaring it in front yeah and so he slows the horse down and the dog keeps walking normal pace and so the dog starts walking and at that point he stopped his horse and then he noticed something critical which was he couldn't hear the dog's footsteps <laughs> <laughs> not cool guys not cool okay <laughs> so he couldn't hear the dog's footsteps and he was like what's going on so then he starts paying attention to the dog uh -huh. and he sees that the dog isn't actually touching the ground oh my gosh it's kind of hovering it's it's doing the footsteps but it's not touching the ground <laughs> The horse has stopped. He, yeah. like, you know, is terrified. Yeah, because if something's behind you, it's hunting you. Mm -hmm. So the dog keeps going. Okay. It turns to look at him because the, the, oh my gosh. the, he stopped, right? In the middle of whatever yeah. road or whatever it was. The dog turns back and then just turns forward and keeps walking. And then just kind of disappears in the darkness. And so he's left with like, oh, do I keep going? <laughs> the cows, do I stop? The cows. But you know, my grandpa's my grandpa, very stubborn man. Even he just saw, uh, we don't know. He kept going, rooted <laughs> up the cows. Hard the cows. Every day. Went back home. And when he went back home, he still was just like, maybe I was tripping, you know? Maybe sure. the dog sure. was touching the ground and I just didn't see it, you right. know? It's dark. It's late. But the thing was, when he got to the ranch, the dog wasn't there. So His dog? The dog wasn't there. No, no, oh. he got to the ranch. So he was just like, maybe he turned around, went back home. I don't know. So goes home, asks my grandma. He's like, hey, did, you, did the dog leave? She was like, no, the dog has been next to our bedroom this whole time. Because you yelled at him and the dog is sad. Oh. For the people who believe in skinwalkers, that could, it could have been. It could have been. It could have been a skinwalker. Or what my grandpa believes, he's like, yeah. I think it was the devil. <laughs> 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 my sure. grandpa is like, because like him and this dog were bonded. And that was the first time he had like... Yeah cussed at the dog and like been rude to the dog Aww. so he was like that was my punishment for abusing that dog that day Aww. i should have let like he was like that was a warning to me by the spirits or whatever yeah. to not treat that dog that way and to let that dog 
accompany me always. Because if it wasn't, like, imagine if it wasn't, like, the ghost dog, it yeah. could have been, like, a mountain lion or something like that. And, like, oh, the dog would have given him a warning. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Because this is something that his dogs do all the time. Yeah. So he was like, yeah, I saw the devil as a dog. <laughs> <laughs> I'm remembering that you told us at a family gathering. At a family I'm gathering. I'm just imagining lots of people just... Can you imagine as a child then looking at his dogs and being like, are you real? Are you real? I didn't even want to make eye contact with the damn dogs. I was so scared of them. Are you still the devil? Are you still no, that dog had long bag. Okay. But these were new dogs. Like I said, he always has like five dogs. But oh, yeah. Well, yeah, that's the time my grandpa saw the devil in a dog. Be nice to your dog is the moral it's I got the moral from. the moral story, yeah, don't be rude to your dog. Yeah, now I'm going to tell you a family story. Okay. okay. Um, so let me think about the context. <laughs> we are at my grandma's house. Oh, everyone, mostly, I keep saying everyone, most people in my family agree that my grandma's house is haunted. This is, this is common knowledge in my our family. My grandparents' house is haunted <laughs> What a coincidence. What a coincidence. <laughs> I mean, there was a lot of death during colonization. So oh, yes. I sense. say there are a bunch of men who are all like maybe my uncles right now. They're probably in like their 60s, 50s. So this is when they were kids, maybe around more like late teen, early 20s type of age. Okay. Um, And so... The ones that are there, my mom's partner's brother was there, um, and my mom's other brothers were there as well. So Soto is for the brother of the partner. Capi and Arturo are the brothers of my mom. Okay. And I don't remember if there was another guy there, but the house has a, several rooms. It's, it's a big house. And... They are like in a little courtyard type of area. It's like the front of the house, kitchen and dining room. And then it's like a little open area for laundry, a room, and then there's an upstairs. Okay. And the guys are all arguing. They're like, oh, I don't want to go upstairs oh, because they got to go get a thing in the room. And they're all scared because the house is haunted? Well, yeah, that's okay. also a thing. <laughs> okay, they're okay. also like, oh, I don't want to go up there by myself. Okay, but they're okay. also like, ah. Oh, Oh, what a what a pain to go up there okay, because got it, they're got it, got also it. men so no one wants to admit that they're scared okay um <laughs> and so eventually soto is the one that ended up being going going up and usually the people that that stayed in that room upstairs were the grandparents and so okay they went upstairs and when they came back down he was scared he was like well no he wasn't scared scared he was mad Okay. Toto came down and he was mad okay. because he was like, you guys are jerks. Why didn't you tell me your grandpa was up there? I had to sneak by him, said hello to him, grabbed the wine bottle. I was like, ay, disculpeme, senor, I'm sorry. He was right there in the bed. And all the guys are looking at him like, oh my, our grandpa's in Mexico City right now. He's not here right now. And so all of them decide to go upstairs and there's no there's no sign of anything they're like what was he under the covers did it look like it was just some shape or what he's like no i literally talked to him i grabbed the bottle and then i went back downstairs did he respond he didn't answer he did, he i don't know if he did i don't know if he did my understanding is there was some sort of like acknowledgement of his existence I don't know oh, if it was like, like a, a uh, like uh, a, uh, or, uh, uh, I don't know, you know, those old man sounds. Yeah. <laughs> Respectfully. <laughs> yeah. So was he on the covers? Was he sitting, laying down? Do you know any of that? I don't know that part, no. I just know that he was in bed. Oh, no. He was in bed. Okay. Um, Like he was resting, kind of sitting up. <gasps> so he, 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 like, he, it was clear to Soto that there was a man in this bed that he was apologizing to for disturbing him. In his room. Of course. He probably was like, freaking asshole. Yeah, he like, you know, <laughs> locked in like no one's in there. Because yes. that's 
that was that that was that was true before <laughs> did he freak out when they told them oh yeah everybody went upstairs nothing happened like that was just like another oh i guess this was our ghost story for today <laughs> <laughs> he's like i didn't even want to come up here in the first place <laughs> first i was embarrassed because i disturbed your dad turns out grandpa grandpa turns out it was a ghost? Yeah, dude. <laughs> He's like, dicks! All of you! <laughs> dicks! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wanna hear oh. another? Yes! You're in a roll. Tell me another. Tell me okay, another. okay. So this one happened when I was a kid. Okay. Um, context again front of the house it's like a closed garage space so people outside can't see inside it's still your grandparents it's house? still my grand yeah but we okay. call it my grandma's house but okay yeah okay <laughs> she just died after him so okay okay so the the courtyard um there's a space in the connected to the courtyard where my aunt had like a seamstress type of people could come and get their dresses done and stuff and then on the other side there were the bedrooms and then in between like the back, which is where my, we were talking about my uncles having that experience. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's a little bit more open. So, um, family's there, only adults. I think it's like either my grandma or my aunt are hanging out in the dining room. Okay. Um, and they're having a visitor over. I don't remember the name of the visitor, but it's like a family friend type of person. And so they're, they come in and they come with their son. And so, you know, they're over on the table having a little chat, da 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 da. And they're seeing that their son is playing in the, in the little, in the courtyard type of area. And, and she's like, and she sees him running. And eventually she starts to see him playing because he, see, he sees a ball that is just rolling by, like rolling by. And so the kid runs to play with the ball. And so the kid starts playing and kicks the ball to one end and time passes and then the ball comes back and then the kid throws it or kicks it they're playing with someone in the courtyard and so the mom says oh who's home who's my kid playing with and the people there were like well no one's we aren't supposed to, no kids are home right now this is there should be no one there's no one else here Was this during it was during the day. Okay. <laughs> it was it during the day. It it they better. went all of el the adults went outside and they went to see what was happening, and 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 the ball was in the corner, unmoving, un not doing anything, and and the kid was like just you know doing his thing, <laughs> unbothered. <laughs> and when he was questioned, he said that he was playing with the little boy. <laughs> Five, okay, a little okay. bit. Yeah, like okay. can create memories and would play with a stranger on questioning. <laughs> um, how many ghosts are at your grandma's house? It's a great question because people, people, my people in my family. So we have, we've seen, we've grandpa, heard about a, a man, a man. Uh huh. We've heard about a boy, a boy. It's not at my grandparents' house, but it's nearby. Um, can I tell you another story? <laughs> okay, go for yeah. it. What also has happened in that house first is I was alive. I was born. So mm -hmm. within the last 28 years, um, in the dining room area, the family's there. That's where people gather. That's where we play Let Me Know. That's where we do our thing. Yeah. And everyone's hanging out. It's nighttime. And all of a sudden, they hear a crash in the kitchen. Like, like something broke. Something broke. You know, and so they run over to the kitchen, and all they find is a cup full of Coke, like Coca Cola. <laughs> There's no glass anywhere. <laughs> this specific cup was, according to everyone else, in the cabinet. It's not like it, it fell. It was nowhere near where it could fall. Okay. And it was also filled with Coke. <gasps> the ghost wanted a coquita. Yeah. <laughs> Else? It was just that. It was just it wasn't them. even like a child. Like I want to go. <laughs> no, 
Be because it wasn't a cup that a kid could reach. Okay. Yeah. I, I think my uncle Capi has been present for all the stories I've said so far. <laughs> so Except maybe, for the nun. <laughs> so maybe the ghost just really likes your uncle. <laughs> the ghosts <laughs> from Laurel. <Laryl. laughs> <Laryl. laughs> well, what happens is um so my my this is on my mom's side and it's a family of six. Okay. Three girls and three boys. Okay. And there's I don't know if there's like a trip going on. I don't know why my uncle Capi couldn't go with the rest of the family, but the family went off to Mazatlan or they were like doing a beach trip. I don't know. Mm -hmm. They were doing something and Capi couldn't go. And so Capi went to my grandma's place and you know, he was having like a wrong day. He was a little bit like, ah, I don't get to go, you know, whatever. I'll just go through my day. Not the best day, is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And so, he takes a nice hot shower, longer than usual, uh, goes into the kitchen, and he's looking for something to eat. He sees some uh, leftover meat in the fridge, and so, and some tortillas, and so he, you know, turns on the oven, and he cooks himself uh, a taco. And then, eventually, my, his, the rest of the family comes home. My grandma's like, where's the meat? And my uncle was like, I ate it. And she was like, that meat was raw. And she and he was like, it it wasn't, it wasn't when I ate it. And then she was like, well, then how did you cook it without the stove? And my uncle was like, what do you mean? How did I cook it without the stove? I used the stove. And my grandma was like, we don't have any gas. We ran out of gas. There is no gas in that in that stove there is no hot water there is none of that and so that ended up being something that nobody could explain he took a hot shower he had and made himself a taco and the meat was not supposed to be cooked it was supposed to be raw <laughs> and so the the question in the family is like who knows who turned that on for him so when he grabbed the meat the meat was already cooked is that his that's story? his that's his understanding yeah but he cooked it on the because he also had to cook the tortilla you know so like yeah. he had to warm it up but yeah. he didn't have to like cook it so your uncle really is the ghost's favorite i really do think so because those those are nice things to do for someone no yeah like heating up the water like okay for those of you who don't know like in mexico you have to have well i don't know how you how does yours work you have to have like gas for your stove mm -hmm. like the guy there's guys that bring like what are these called Tank like big. tanks tanks of gas yeah. for you and you buy them every week you have to order it you Someone have to order has it. to come to your house and install it yeah and when you run out you're out and you have to wait until like they're available to deliver it to you so it sucks you can't shower i mean you can with freezing water mm -hmm. but the thing that sucks is you can't cook so a lot of households will have like wood Mm -hmm. so that they can like cook outside when mm -hmm. they run out of gas mm -hmm. so that is is wild it's Curious. wild yeah. and like even we thought about well maybe the water got warm because of the sun maybe it got warmed up with the sun but mm -hmm. there wasn't enough but it wouldn't last water. that long yeah because i remember we ran out of gas and we had to shower like in less than five minutes <laughs> yes the water water would run out yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. you cannot take a long shower with the water being heated by the sun and he did he <laughs> took a longer shower than normal mm -hmm. yeah wow yeah your uncle is their favorite okay i tell you another story about my yes. uncle <laughs> okay 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 yes cool okay so um it's uh saturday okay. and my uncle i don't know how old he is but he's a kid again copy same guy and he's out and about <laughs> with the, with his mom i think and what ends up happening is it eventually he ends up falling and chipping a tooth and so they're like ah, well we might as well go see the dentist it's a saturday so the dentist shouldn't be in the office but maybe we'll happen to catch him and when they get to the office the nurse says no i'm sorry he isn't here um you couldn't catch him but i can help you i can do all of the things that, that i can take care of Gabby, and you know be on your way and all that and so, you know, both my m grandma and my uncle are talking to this, to this nurse and she, you know, fixes him up, gives him medicine, 
all of that. My grandma, she's like, ah, hey, can I pay you? Can I pay you when we come back for the checkup? Or and so the nurse says, yeah, you, you can come back on Monday. That's when the doctor will be in. All good. They so they go. They come back on Monday, and they they are told that no one was in that weekend at the doctor's. No doctor, no nurse, no one was there that weekend. And they tell them that this is what happened and they look in the back and no, nothing is missing. It doesn't look like there are any swabs out. It doesn't look like that office was used at all. I got chills. <laughs> <laughs> but they, they had the medicine. They literally brought the medicine that they had been given. Yeah. Yeah. So your uncle is like really like, for lack of a better word, blessed. Yeah. Like he's got something looking out for him. He really does. Always. Is he like lucky that he becomes successful as a grown up? Oh yeah. Um, my uncle Gabi is so of the six kids, two people uh, were born blind, and my mom is one of those kids, and my uncle Gabi is the other one. Mm. And so my uncle Gabi had in Durango. He founded a school for the blind like a vocational school, mm. um, and he also has gone on a lot of adventures that a lot of people would not have gotten out of maybe in the same way as him. Okay. So Yeah, so your <laughs> uncle is really lucky. Yeah. He's, he's really got, like, I think he would spirits, agree with Blessed, yeah. Spirits looking out for him. Wow. Mm -hmm. Dang! Mm -hmm. Now I want to meet your uncle. <laughs> Give me some of that good luck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah wow those yeah. were amazing thank you for sharing oh, yeah all no those. problem and we're definitely going to do another episode and you're going to tell us more about oh, it oh <laughs> i'm happy to okay i was we were talking about you know some different stories that happened in your grandma's house mm -hmm. i it triggered a memory of like a story that my mom told me so i'm going to tell you that story and then i'll tell you the story that i had planned originally okay okay okay, <laughs> okay so last episode i talked about duendes and you're mm -hmm. familiar with duendes as I well sure right am, yeah. yeah so in my family's rancho that they had when all of my um aunts and uncles and my mom they were little duendes were like a common thing yeah they would always hear them they would always like do they say vagancias mm. um which in english why would that be but like in english i think it's mayhem mm -hmm. mayhem so like they would just Nothing like serious that was like detrimental to people's health, but like inconveniences that would annoy you. Like yeah. that's that's what the duendes uh, would do to them. Huh? And so my, um, like I said in the previous video, in my mom's town, they believe that duendes are the spirits of un unbaptized children. Oh yes. Or unborn children, souls of children who haven't been born. Yes. Um, and so they believe that duendes want are lonely because they, they either passed away before they got to have their life or they haven't been given the opportunity to get a life. So oh, when sense, yeah. they see children, they get envious because they want to be able to do all of that. Oh. And so... And kids are innocent. Yes, yeah, innocent. Innoc kids are innocent, but you know, that mm. thing of like kids, when they get jealous, they do bad things that they shouldn't do. Right. And so when the duendes get jealous, they do things to the children to mess with them and the ultimate thing that they could do is take child's life away um so that their soul could be with them and they can play with them forever right right so my mom and her brothers and sisters were always warned when you hear the duendes do not engage right they will try to get you to go to them mm -mm. don't go to them because then you will stay with them forever Sounds like the fae. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Or, or fairies. <laughs> yes, exactly. Oh, um, so my mom is the youngest of all her siblings. And she was telling me, she's like, when she was trying to remember the story, she was like, I think I was young enough. She was like, they weren't forcing me to work. So I was pretty young, you know? Okay. I was just hanging out with them <laughs> while they were all working. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty young. Yeah, that's pretty young. <laughs> so she, she said that they were all working whatever crops they were doing yeah and they sat her down at on this big rock yeah and they told her don't leave there you huh. know you're gonna mess up whatever we're doing your <laughs> job is to sit here where we can see you Calladita te ves más bonita. yeah <laughs> literally <laughs> and so she's just playing she's sitting there she's playing with herself like you know little things she has around her she has right. little little ribbons on her shirt so she's messing with the ribbons right. when she starts to hear giggling 
And so she's trying to find the giggling and she turns mm -hmm. and there's another rock in the distance. And she can see two children that were wearing the exact same outfit as her. What a coincidence. What a coincidence. Oh my gosh. They're wearing the same outfit as hers. And she's looking at them, you know, and they're kind of mimicking what she's doing. Oh, that's... You know, she's playing uh, with the ribbon and she so looks they're also doing that. and they're doing that too. And so she like, you know, looks around. She sees that her family isn't watching her. She gets off the rock uh -huh. and she hides behind the rock because no. she's scared. Like, oh, okay. she knows where they okay. are, right? Okay. She knows where they are. She's like, there shouldn't be other children okay. here. You that's know? logical. Yeah. So she... She goes behind the rock and then like she like peeps and she can see that the two children are doing the same thing. She would peep, they, would, they would peep. 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 She would hide, they would hide. But the whole time oh they were gosh. laughing at her. Oh, they like were, mocking her. They were like... mocking her. And when they're like when she's done that a few times, they both like come out and they're just telling her to go. Like, come, come, come play. Come play with us. And in that moment, my um, grandma comes because she, she wants to check in on her. Yeah. And she's like, what are you doing? And my mom is just like, those kids are copying me. Like, I don't like them. And my grandma looks and she's like, what kids? But she knows about Duendes as well, right? So then she grabs her and she's like, don't, don't look at them anymore. She grabs her and she takes her with them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> your mom was like okay my mom was scared of them because like everybody had told her the stories right. of duendes so old enough to be able to remember and make those choices old decisions. enough to be scared yeah <laughs> yeah wow and old enough to remember that for the rest of your life probably yeah and i also said like my grandma were constantly save them from the duendes yeah and so the duendes didn't like her yeah they she said that they would always mess with my grandma. Of course. And like the thing that, because with the Coke story, I was yeah, like, oh, yeah, yeah. The thing that I remember the most is like my grandma had a shelf in her kitchen uh -huh. where she had all of her like glassware. She had all her plates and she had this like bowl that was like her prized possession, this bowl that they could only eat out of special occasions. Oh, you know, no. there's Semana Santa and stuff. So, Nobody was allowed near that bowl. I'm scared for the bowl. Yeah, so she was, you know, in there making lunch. Everybody was working at that point. My mom was older. She could. Uh -huh. She was not young enough to not uh -huh. do anything anymore. <laughs> no. So none of her kids were home. She's there. She's preparing, you know, the tortillas uh -huh. to take them out, and she hears rattling in her in her kitchen, and she assumes either the dogs or somebody came in to. You know, grab something. Mm -hmm. mm. And she's just like, you better not mess with my bowl. You know, just like yelling from the from wherever she was. Because I guess there was a room. It was on the other side where the glassware and their stuff. Their pantry, let's call it. Right. The pantry was. Um, and she keeps hearing rattling. And then suddenly she just hears everything come down. Oh, glass breaks. No. Everything. It's so loud. And she knows specifically because she heard the, like, the wood hit the floor. Yeah. She's like, no my bull and she's just like so sad and she's ready to beat up whoever Absolutely. did it you know she's like she's coming for blood she is fuming you see and red. she goes into oh. the kitchen the kitchen the pantry and there she finds the tabla de son perfectly laid on the floor with the bowls and everything on it totally fine it's like somebody grabbed it and gently put it down. Which is not what she heard. <laughs> not what she heard. Not what she not heard. What she heard. Ah! <laughs> I'd be so mad at them. Yeah, no, but the way that the board was, yeah. there was no way that you could put it down without dropping something. Right. So that alone. But it was heavy too. It was heavy. Everything was on it and not one thing was broken. <laughs> and she was like, do I do? Response. I have to do yep. that too. Yep. Ah, oh, so, you scared me. Yeah, like they would do things like that to her Gosh. all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Through all the stories that like 
my mom and my aunts have told me, I'm like, yeah, I believe it. I believe the Wendy's are real. I believe they love to mess with my grandma. Because that's hilarious. Because <laughs> yes. all of her children were too scared of her to ever try to pull anything like that. They're in the ranch. There's nobody else there. Of course. There's no explanation. Right. There's no explanation other than like the spirits were messing with her. Because <laughs> they were she bored. She needs to be humbled. Yeah. I, I feel like that's kind of, that's, that's a similar, what's the word, like, idea that I kind of grew up with. That, like, there are, there is evil out in the world. Mm -hmm. um, you need to be careful. But if you're good, most of the time your experiences aren't going to be scary like that. Yeah, yeah. most of the experiences will be, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> Ghosts have a sense of humor too. Oh my Spirits goodness. like to have fun too. Being dead for all those years, you gotta you get come bored. up with something. Huh? <laughs> I think all of our stories have been really like harder <laughs> this time. Yeah. So let me tell you one that was not. Yeah. So this one happened in the same rancho, and I think my mom was either not born yet or she was a baby because just of the age range. Mm -hmm. So this happened to Mitia Josefina. She is the second oldest uh -huh. eldest so my this was like in the morning i think yes mm -hmm. it was in the morning so my grandpa was like outside you know getting his horse ready getting stuff ready my grandma was you know quickly scrambling after him helping him with whatever he needed and my tia was young enough was a child young enough that she could be in the kitchen eating by herself so she didn't need supervision yeah she's probably eating beans frijoles yeah, con queso so. right yeah. and she's just you know entertaining herself eating mm -hmm. when she looks to the corner and she just sees a lady <sighs> dressed in black slowly coming out of the wall <laughs> and she's just like <laughs> you know she's just like <laughs> I'm not seeing that. I'm gonna keep eating. <laughs> Don't move. Just like try not to acknowledge. <laughs> you know? She's scared, obviously. Oh, no. Why would we do that? <laughs> She's trying not to acknowledge the lady. She's just like, I'm just gonna keep eating. <laughs> it's not real. I'm just gonna keep eating. Yeah. Um, and she would like glance up and she would notice the lady was coming closer. No. Closer and closer. No. And as she got closer, she took her hands out and she cupped them like this. Oh, no. And she started making eye contact with her. No. And she was just like giving, trying to give her something. Oh, give her. Yeah, she was just like Not putting, asking for anything. No, no, she was putting her hands out like this. For her like. Uh-huh. And my aunt doesn't. You know, she can't look away, but she doesn't want to look at the hands. Right. Right? She's scared. But when she can finally look down at the hands, she said that she saw rats oh. crawling out of her hands. Like, crawling. Like, so many rats that they were, like, falling oh. to the ground. And she's just, like, eating. You know, she's just trying to, like, look. she looks at her bowl, looks at the hands. Oh, no. She's frozen in fear. And... I don't know what happens. Somebody makes noise outside where like the lady looks away and when she the spirit looks away, she's able to move again. And she immediately gets up and she starts like <laughs> going back to the wall. But the lady keeps like coming closer and closer. And she's like, at that point, my, my aunt is like next to the wall uh -huh. and she's slowly crawling oh, no. to the door, like really scared. And the spirit's just like in her face. Oh my God. Like trying to like, Take it, take, take it, it, take it. And finally, Mithya reaches the door and she just runs. Yeah. yeah. And she's crying, yeah. obviously. Runs up to my grandparents and they're like, what's going on? And she's like, there's a lady in the kitchen and she's trying to give me rats. And so they go in there. And they're like, there's nothing here. No rats. And so they ask her to tell them what she saw. And when she tells us the story, my grandpa gets so mad. Not because of what you think. He gets mad and he's like, why didn't you take the rats? <laughs> and she's like, why did I take the rats? Yes, that was my rant. 
reaction. I was like, what? And my mom was like, no. If a spirit is ever offering you something that looks repulsive, it's a trick because they're offering you gold. Uh, so if she uh, would have taken it, the spirit would have given her gold. Noted. And so my grandma was upset. What? <laughs> because she could have gotten gold. But you should have told the story earlier. Mm -hmm. You should have told her that. Mm -hmm. He's like, you fumbled the bag. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like next time she appears you take those scraps <laughs> but obviously never again <laughs> no, once in a lifetime type it of was thing. a once in a lifetime type oh, of thing wow mm -hmm. it grosses me out so much to think about that story you're, you're just trying to eat your frijoles con queso and suddenly the spirit crawls out of the wall no. and is offering you no. rats yeah any logical person no. would have pieced out. Absolutely. Even a grown person Absolutely. would be like, no! <laughs> what is she gonna say? Would you wash your hands first, please? <laughs> I'm eating my, you're putting rats in my bees. Excuse me, can you wait till after I finish? <laughs> and like the thought she was a child. And like the thought of my grandpa not comforting her and yeah. I'm getting mad at her. I could have accepted it. Yeah. I wouldn't have accepted I it. I would have done the exact same thing. Absolutely. Crawled my way back to the wall and just. <laughs> you knowing that now, if I was offered a handful of cockroaches, I think I'd be like delicious. I, you know, they're too far. I don't know. Crunchy. <laughs> my veins needed some. <laughs> I have to ask the spirit a couple of specifics. Like, will this feel? You're dropping a bunch of cockroaches in my hand. Well, the what if I drop it? Just eat my flesh. <laughs> I'll be like, no, thank you. Will there really be gold? Because <laughs> if there's no gold, I, I don't, I don't want you. it. No. <laughs> but like the entirety of that story, from the spare crawling out of the wall to slowly approaching her to putting her hands out to then having the hand filled with rats, it's just. Too much. Disgusting. That's too much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You said rats, not mice. Rats. So yeah, and on that note, <laughs> those are all the stories we have for you today. If you have any stories like that, any spooky stories that have happened to you personally or to any of your family members that you want to share, you can send them to me in our email. My email is going to be in the description below. Thank you, Dee, for being part of this. So many great stories. Oh, thank you so much. And I want to know all about your uncle. <laughs> <Can't wait. laughs> you That'd be so great. Yeah. So thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you at the next episode. Bye. Bye.